Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Bulubinaka. When I was sitting there, I was actually in a dilemma, thinking, do I give my talk first and then announce the bonus amount, or do I give the bonus amount first and then say what I needed to say? Um, but uh, it's good to be here. Uh, CEO, uh, the board member, Solicitor General, Sarbuddha Sharma, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the staff of Fiji Airways. Uh, today, again, is a very... Uh, happy occasion, auspicious, auspicious occasion, uh, because we are now again giving out profits or sharing profits made by Fiji Airways. You are the only entity in Fiji that has any state-owned interest in it that actually shares its profit with all its staff. And of course, as we've given out bonuses also, and not profit sharing, but bonuses with other state-owned enterprises, um, their bonus levels, in fact, comparatively have been much lower than what you're actually getting as profit sharing. So I'm sure with your management agreements you also have, with the individual staff agreements, you also have bonus uh, uh, provisions in that too. But you are on top of that getting a profit sharing that is unprecedented. We, of course, would like to emulate that in other state-owned enterprises, using you as a role model. However, in order to be able to achieve that, of course, Fiji Airways had to go through a number of reforms and Fiji Airways has had to remain focused on a number of commercial imperatives, human resource imperatives, and of course, the new game in town, which as you've seen through Ron Kaufman, is your service delivery imperatives. The reality is, as Andre has just highlighted, that the airline industry is a very cutthroat industry. I think many people in Fiji do not necessarily understand the type of trials and tribulations and the configurations you have to go through and permutations to be able to keep a national airline afloat. If you look at the statistics, in the past 10 to 15 years, a number of national carriers have closed down. Even if you look at the Pacific region itself, without necessarily naming them, Two or three of them have actually shut down. They're virtually non-existent. And in fact, they are now reaching out to Fiji Airways to provide services to their own countries. And you know exactly those countries that I'm talking about. Or even those national carriers that do exist in the region are either, are either a one airline national carrier or two aircraft national carrier. So that's the ground reality. What has, of course, happened in, in Fiji uh, is that we have taken a very reformist approach to it. And those reforms, of course, started off with Fiji Airways, and today we are paying those dividends. So before I like to say a few more things, let me uh, talk to you about money. Uh, I'm delighted to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that Fiji Airways Group has recorded the biggest profit ever in its history before tax for the fiscal year ended 31st December 2016. Please put your hands together for yourself and your management. The group's revenue was $825.3 million compared to the $815.3 million that was achieved in the previous year. The group passenger numbers increased to 1.4 million from the 1.3 million compared to the same period last year, the previous year. Which of course now brings us to the group profit. The group's profit before tax is $84.5 million compared to the 72, sorry, compared to the $70.2 million achieved in the previous year. So you've gone up by about $14 million. Please put your hands together again, please. It's an outstanding result. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's a testimony uh, and a testament to the collaboration that has taken place between yourselves, your management, and all the other stakeholders that are in involved in ensuring that Fiji Airways runs, not just runs, but, but runs a lot better, a lot more efficiently, and with, uh, with a higher focus on service delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, so therefore, based on the profits uh, that I've just announced that Fiji Airways has made, the group has made. All eligible non-management staff of Fiji Airways and Fiji Link will receive a profit share payout of $4,000 each. Every single staff. 
this amount, ladies and gentlemen, is approximately 20% higher, 20% higher than the same period last year, which is 2015. The eligible Fiji Airways and Fiji Link managers will receive a management bonus of no less than $9,000 each. This is again a 20% higher increase than the previous year. To put it into perspective, ladies and gentlemen, the total payout for profit, the, the profit payout, is $6 million, approximately $6 million. Of that $6 million, $4 million is being paid out to non-management staff. So non-management staff are getting a bulk of the profit sharing that I've uh, just announced, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, also thank Andre for his leadership. Now, Andre has brought about a particular level of commercial, commercial nous and a commercial sensibility and most definitely a sense of vision that's very much in alignment with what government has had in view and has had in place for a long time. As we've said in the, in the uh, press statement that's going to go out, in the media statement, that the government can create the envi an enabling environment, and that's our job. But it is the responsibility of the management to ensure that it achieves commercial success. And our view is that if we create an enabling environment, we appoint the best people to lead the organization, and we leave them alone to run that organization. Because as we've seen previously, that we always used to have management or government interference in the day-to-day -day operations. I've heard numerous stories where, you know, when the planes have been full, you've had previously ministers coming on board and said, take somebody off because I need to get on the plane. When I get told that I cannot get on the aircraft, I'm actually very happy. Because I know that the airline is doing well. And I know that you will get a bigger share of the profits too. That's the reality, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the approach that we need to take. And that sort of discipline needs to continue. And I'd just like to highlight a few other points, but before I go into that, please put your hands together for Andre. I'm, I'm very glad that Andre talked about the, the service to Ron Kaufman, who I actually just met, in fact, a few days ago back in Singapore again. And the fact that Andre, so it fit to bring him out, means, and I hope that you also understand, that in order for Fiji Airways to become or remain relevant, to be able to achieve its full potential, we need to improve the quality of service. We need to go up to that next step. In fact, there are many steps to go up. And those of you who would have attended the training would also realize that. And in fact, at the moment, I would argue and say that we're actually just scraping the surface. There is already another dimension to it, and we need you to get into that space. To be able to get into that space, to be able to understand that, and the nuances of running a, 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 a modern-day airline service is very, very important. So everybody, as we say, is critically important. Whether it's the person who's handling the baggage for Fiji Airways, whether it's the person who's directing traffic, whether it's the person who's tracking the flight, whether it's a person who's actually determining how much a, person, a passenger will pay for the seats, whether it's the aircraft engineers, whether it's the flight attendants, everybody contributes and everybody is equally important. And this is why everybody, when non-management staff, is getting the equal amount of share as profits. Because it is all about teamwork. But it's also ensuring that we're able to know exactly what the other person from the other division needs and what they want, and what environment we're going to create. In the same way, just before coming here, I was with AFL. And I said to AFL that in this new uh, modernization of uh, Nandi Airport, that we must give Fiji Airways a prominent position. Because Fiji Airways is not just another airline operating out of Nandi Airport. Fiji Airways is the national carrier of Fiji. When there is a cyclone, when there is a cyclone, the only aircraft that operates out of Nandi is Fiji Airways. Tourism contributes approximately 36% towards our GDP. Nearly 70% of those arrivals that come by 
international uh, airlines is carried by Fiji Airways. So it is very, very important that Nandi Airport is branded and is seen as the gateway to Fiji Airways also. And we must continue to do that and I'm glad that uh, Fiji Airways has decided to invest a significant amount of money in its lounge and significantly also AFL has today made some concessions in respect of how they will work together uh, with Fiji Airways. But the point that I'm driving at, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about understanding where you are. It's all about understanding the market. It's all about not knowing only about Fiji. As Andre just highlighted, we just signed the code share agreement with Jet Airways. Jet Airways operates out of a country that in about four or five years time will have the largest outbound market in the world. The largest outbound market in the world. So we must tap into that. Jet Airways is owned by Etihad, as you know, which has got really deep pockets. They bring a particular level of footprint that Fiji Airways can get from connecting with Jet Airways, from connecting with Etihad by default. These are the things that we need to understand, all of you need to understand. The people who are working on the floor, you all need to understand where your place is in the world. Because if you understand that, if you are able to connect the dots, then you'll have much greater team effort. Then you'll be able to, or you'll want to, try and emulate, try and emulate what the others are doing and doing well. And every time I travel, I always have some pointers. I ring up Shanaz or ring up Andre and say, you know, you've got really rubbish movies. By the way, I travel on this aircraft. You need to improve this, you need to improve that services, maybe flight attendants can take orders before the plane takes off, whatever it is. These are the kind of things we need to constantly be thinking about and trying to understand how we can improve ourselves. I um, also wanted to say that when, when we talk about services, and it applies also to the tourism sector, there are certain prejudices we need to get over. And those prejudices may be regarding service delivery or how we do things. Sometimes when we do things in a particular way for a period of time, we think that's the only way to do it. That is not the only way to do it. Every single country, every single successful economic, su economically successful country, any entity, commercial entity that's an international entity, constantly reinvents itself constantly reinvent itself. I'll tell you a small story. I think Ron maybe have shared this with them. You know, the, the Singaporeans decided a few decades ago that the only way that, one of the ways that they can, uh, you know, reconfigure themselves to be applicable and, and, and as a aspirational destination, that they need to improve the quality of service. And they wanted the quality of service to improve at all stages, including from the immigration officials. So they wanted the immigration officials to actually smile when somebody presents their passport to them. But you know, immigration officials generally don't smile. So they wanted them to smile. So they could, you can only teach people a certain amount of things. You can't actually teach them to do the emotional things unless they really have a buy-in to it. So what they decided was they tried all sorts of things. Eventually they came up with the idea and that was to put a bowl of lollies in front of the immigration officials. So as soon as I present my passport, they say, would you like a lolly? That was it. It did the trick. Because when you normally say, would you like a lolly, you cannot actually growl and say it. You say, would you like a lolly? So that's how they got them to smile. Now today, Singapore is par excellence regarding service. But they themselves are constantly thinking about it. It took, I visited one of their company's office, it took them then 15 minutes to register a company in Singapore. And I said, this is fantastic. It used to take one year in Fiji to register a company sometimes. And they said to me, they said, no, we think it's too long. We must register a company in Singapore in three minutes. That was the target. So the point of the matter is that we all need to understand how we connect with each other and how we can constantly improve those services. We have, of course, I would, one of the wish lists I have, of course, I constantly talk to Andre about, 
we've started uh, flying to Singapore. The government has partnered with your company. We have partnered with you by way of $18 million in a marketing campaign for Singapore Airlines uh, with uh, flying to Singapore. We, we're partnering with you by contributing $18 million to the marketing of Singapore, to flying to Singapore, sorry. We would like that flight frequency increased to at least three times. As we speak, the World Bank is opening its regional office in Suva. Now, what does that mean? It means that there will be more and more people flying to Fiji. It means that more people will fly from Singapore. There's also a World Bank IFC office there. We need to be able to take advantage of these opportunities that exist. We are very excited about the flight school, the simulators. Government has again contributed about a million dollars, is set aside a million dollars for the establishment of that. Because the reality is that we need to ensure that we retain as much of the dollar as possible. We don't want our pilots to be sent overseas, go to Singapore, pay money there, use their hotels, use their taxis. We want them to use our taxis. We want them to use our hotels. We want others to come and use our taxis, go and buy barbecue down the road or go into Ed's bar. Wherever it is they're going to do and spend their money. So we need to have the big vision, the big picture. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, leads me to my, my, my final, final uh, point, that we need to ensure that things like airline safety is very critical. We cannot give an ounce on it. We cannot have one incident that can wipe out your entire hard work. So this is why we have to be very vigilant about it. We must have merit-based appointments. We must choose the best people for the right positions. Because only when you do that will you be able to, next year, get a better share of the profit. In the same way as we've said, sometimes we get carried away with title positions, with personalities. At the end of the day, what matters is your bottom line. At the end of the day, what matters is your viability as an organization. And that durability will only be guaranteed if we're able to stick to these fundamentals. So, ladies and gentlemen, it also highlights to us that workplace relations are also very important. Modern day workplace relations means a collaborative approach, a partnership approach. We must, as employers and employees, be able to talk to each other. We must be able to understand that what is it that drives the company? What is it that will keep the company afloat? What is it that we can do together that everybody will be able to participate in and everybody will be able to benefit? So that, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, because of those changes and because of the pending changes that are taking place, we are here today. I'd like to lastly thank all of you. Thank all of you for taking this journey that started about five or six years ago with the reforms that took place. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for sticking together with the company. Thank you for working together with Andre. And we look forward to your continued support. Because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at it from a very clinical and economic and commercial perspective, Fiji has enormous potential to make enormous amounts of money. Fiji has enormous potential to lift up the living standards of all Fijians. Some of the situation that we have our fellow Fijians live in is unacceptable because of decades of neglect. But all of us, if we partnered and we have that sense of patriotism, we have that sense of commitment to organizations such as Fiji Airways, we can fly as high as we can. So with those few words, ladies and gentlemen, Nagabak Levu and I wish you a very good year. Thank you.
Hey, you know? You can eat. You can Three hundred people with your hand. One.